Last we left off, I spent over 60 hours completely beating Act 1 of Baldur's Gate 3 by myself. Was it worth it? Well, judging from this pouch that weighs 66 pounds and is full of spell scrolls and consumables, I'd say it was. In addition, nobody I care about has died yet. They're just stuck in camp playing Uno or something. Today we push forward into Act 2 and try to beat every possible encounter as a lone wolf. We begin Act 2 by entering the Shadow Curse Lands. This area gives you a unique debuff that deals damage over time. But you can avoid this with the light or dancing lights cantrip, so it's more of a slight inconvenience than something to actually worry about. Moving forward, we encounter a group of harpers who we introduce ourselves to, and they are quickly ambushed by literal shadows. This encounter wasn't too much trouble due to the adequateness of my meat shields, and of course, darkness, because casting darkness at the enemies constructed of literal shadow somehow makes the fight easier. I then make my way to the last light inn, which is a little on the nose for the area, but you know, whatever. Jahira kindly introduces herself, and we make our way to Damon so we can potentially romance Karlak. Yeah, Damon's here. What the f Huh? Did Damon just die? What the f So, apparently there's a glitch if you did something with the strange ox in Act 1, I, I don't know what, but it will cause it to transform it at a certain range and instantly start attacking Damon. Entering turn-based mode doesn't stop it, and reloading doesn't even fix it, He's just so dead. Damon He's just, is basically guaranteed to die to this glitch. Is there just no way to save Damon? Oh, hold on. This is so stupid. Is this actually the case? Which locks out Karlak's character progression along with some equipment. And since I'm a simp for Karlak, I couldn't let this happen. Unfortunately, it seems like there wasn't any way to save Damon. But there is if you do what's called a gamer move. <laughs> oh my god, it's so complicated. What? First thing you want to do is find the trigger range which renders in the strange ox and go a little bit behind it, then go talk to Withers at your camp. You want to reclass as a full level 7 sorcerer. Make sure you take distance spell as one of your meta magic options, then take misty step as a second level spell, and banishment as your fourth level spell. In theory, you wait for Damon to be in the correct position and then cast misty step distance spell, which may allow you to then cast banishment on Damon before he gets one shot allowing you to attack the shape changer and initiate combat with it. After multiple attempts to get this to work, I finally managed to accomplish it, and was extremely relieved to see Damon was alive and well after I banished him to whatever place he ended up. After reclassing to our normal Warlock Cleric build, I then bought various items from the vendors of the Last Light Inn, the most important being the Chargebound Warhammer, the Shield of Devotion, the Cloak of Protection, and the Darkfire Shortbow. All four are extremely good for our current build. The Chargebound Warhammer lets us scale our damage about on par with the Everburn Blade, the Shield of Devotion gives us a plus 2 AC and an additional first level spell slot, the Cloak of Protection grants a plus 1 bonus to AC and all saving throws, and the Darkfire Sharpbow grants the ability to cast haste once per long rest while also granting resistance to fire and cold damage. After upgrading our build, I took this opportunity to sell pretty much all of our items from our camp chest we weren't using, granting us more than 7,000 gold pieces. After destroying their economy like the British Empire, we finally went to talk with Jahira. She let us know that the Absolute is likely residing within Moonrise, and we'd need a way to get past the Shadow Curse in order to venture forward. She said I could go talk with Isabel, but last time I did that, a frat dude kidnapped her away, so I just metagamed and teamed up with the Harpers in order to find the cult's secret KFC spice that prevents the Shadow Curse. We find out that they are using a functioning Moon Lantern, so naturally, I immediately commit attack war crimes on them. Right <laughs> just fucking booming blade. It is so massive. And use my newfound magic items to deal over 60 damage in a single turn. After obliterating all of these adds, I freed the pixie from the Moon Lantern, which grants the pixie's blessing which completely negates the Shadow Curse. It's around this point that my friend Nori from Scotland joined in, and I enlightened him on the best item in the game. This has a Beholder inside of it, 
So if I really need to, I can just go, you know, pocket beholder and, you know. Pocket yeah, 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 you know, n naturally. You can't see, see this Moving forward and exploring a bit, I wanted to gain some more XP and I thought it would be a good opportunity to show off my game knowledge to Nori. Unfortunately, forgot that these creatures do in fact have immunity to blindness, making darkness useless. Out of panic, I debated pulling out the pocket beholder of the iron flask, but I ended up adopting a much simpler strategy of just hitting shit as hard as I possibly can, which ended up working way too well. After that encounter, we found a creepy tiefling child who wanted to play hide and seek. Unfortunately for him, Velo's eye lets you see invisibility, making this incredibly easy since either they failed the saving throw or you just trace where the saving throw is made from. After beating a kid in hide and seek with military tracking technology, he gave us a magic ring which I probably won't be using, and we moved forward exploring the rest of the Shadow Curse lands. Pretty soon after, I got ambushed by blights and shambling mounds, and quickly lost the fight after loudly declaring my ego. <laughs> I, I do have plot armor. I do actually have plot armor, in case you weren't aware. Never mind. Now that I knew they were waiting for me, I was ready to take drastic measures to defeat them. <laughs> just kidding. I just dealt damage to them out of combat, so the surprise condition would trigger, then demolish most of them with a third level Maximize Shatter. I was running low on options, so I teleported away to give myself more time to heal, and was able to kill the remaining enemies with my big hammer. You wanna die that bad? But hey, I didn't use darkness for once, so it isn't always the go-to strategy. Sometimes you actually get to play the game. After that, we cleared out some measles and destroyed these cursed ravens, and we finally headed to Wraithwin and went to the Mason's Guild basement, because at this point I actually had no idea what I was doing since I never fully explored Act 2 up until this it's point. Fine, After killing the ghouls and shadows underneath, we grabbed the Helm of Arcane Acuity. Being completely lost still, I encountered Arabella, who we saved in Act 1, who now has magical powers from the uranium inside the Statue of Sylvanas, because that glow is not natural. After killing her prisoners of war, we finally leveled up to level 8, and multiclassed again into Draconic Sorcerer, and made even more of a Tumblr character. Um, yes, I'm a half-drow, half-tiefling, holy warrior of Tybora, who made a deal with the devil, and my Draconic heritage is finally unveiling itself. I'm so cool. We then quickly solved the plaque puzzle for the statue, I definitely didn't look it up. Making our way into the Sharan Sanctuary, we gained a temporary buff after succeeding some rolls. But that wasn't reward enough for me, since there wasn't anything else down here. I was frustrated and randomly attacked the statue, which actually spawned three enemies in. So, more XP, I guess. But it wasn't as easy as that. I haven't taken a long rest in a while, so my resources were low, and all three of them were level 7, and one of them was a paladin. So this wasn't looking good. I ended up burning all of my spells and resorted to just using Booming Blade and doing my best to heal through the damage with healing potions. Oh god. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hoya. Holy sh Um might be time to take a long rest. Finally taking a long rest, we are interrupted by Mazora, who needs to rescue a client from Moonrise Towers. I persuade her that if we do this, Will gets to break his pact. Our dream visitor tells us what a good boy we've been, and Nori had to leave the stream. Moving forward, we once again encounter our resident Disney villain, who wants us to send one of his enemies back to the Hells, and Asterion makes a deal with him to decipher the words on his back. After which I send him right back to camp. After solving a simple puzzle, we find ourselves within the Gauntlet of Shar. We skipped the first puzzle for now because I forgot how to do it, moved along the outskirts of the Gauntlet, and met a Cloaker, which after dying for the first time encountering it, I reloaded my save and cast Darkness to win! How exciting. Moving forward, we needed to meet Balthazar in order to progress the story further, but in order to do so, we need to clear this encounter within the Gauntlet of Shar. All of these enemies have Shar Sight, which grants them immunity to blindness, negating the effectiveness that Darkness would have had here in this encounter. Not to mention, there are many more enemies than allies here. 
meaning the action economy is definitely not working in my favor. Luckily, all we have to do is smash all these portals with our big hammer and luck our way out of getting hit too many times. Oh no, they're doing the thing. They want out. Bro, the door is locked. And we can have a Best chat with Balthazar. Best man at my wedding, Balthazar. Knows which car insurance company. That's Balthazar. Knows how to save you money. Most trustworthy, Balthazar. He lets us know of a relic deep underneath the gauntlet that he wants us to clear a way for. And we march onward to the challenges the gauntlet presents us. The first one is the soft step trial, which you can trivialize with a couple of invisibility spells and some know-how of the maze. The second is the self-same trial, which is way easier on a solo playthrough because the AI won't know how to play your character optimally. So we just hit them really hard with our big hammer. The third trial is the leap of faith, and you, you can literally just see the path ahead if your eyeballs are working properly. Um, so unless you're blind, this is pretty easy. Sorry to any blind viewers out there. Up next is the silent library. Destroy the portal in the center to remove the silence effect and destroy any justiciers in the room. Loot everything in here and careful of the traps in the bookshelves because I think like half of them are trapped at least. And put the Night Singer book on the pedestal. This isn't really necessary, but you gain the Dark Justicier Helm and the Spear of Night, which changes into a different weapon once you free the Night Song. Or kill the Night Song, up to you. Of course, before we push the story along, we have to deal with Raphael's little situation ship with your gear. By simply jumping or teleporting over this chasm, you can find yourself in a position to ambush your gear, giving you a massive advantage during the fight. Now, unfortunately, all of these enemies have Devil Sight, which means casting darkness is once again completely useless. Instead, we sneak up behind them and cast a Cone of Cold from a Spell Scroll, dealing 8d8 cold damage in a massive area. This opened up combat with a massive amount of damage, and we gain a surprise round on the entire encounter. Once we got to your gear, we attacked him a bunch of times with my big hammer, choosing to crit on the final attack using Luck of the Far Realms from the worms inside my brain, sending him back to the Nine Hells. Naturally, you would think that facing off against eight Maragons and a Displacer Beast would be difficult, but this is where our single level of Sorcerer comes into play. Sorcerer grants us access to the first level spell, Shield, which gives a plus five bonus to your armor class in reaction to an attack that would have hit you. In addition to all my equipment, that gives us an armor class of 26. Of course you can get that higher, but is that really necessary? Apparently so, because even with my high AC, I quickly ran out of spell slots to guard from attacks and found myself in a precarious situation. Luckily they missed enough times on my 21 AC and I was able to once again barely scrape by with zero spell slots left. But hey, this isn't a no long restaurant so we're a-okay. After gathering my umbral gems together, we made our way to the portal of the Shadowfell, where the Night Song lies in wait for a future Justicier. So naturally, I ran away and went to talk with Damon in the Last Light Inn so we could fix more of Karlak's engine. Unfortunately, I must have ruined her romance quest since she seemed more interested in Withers than a living person, so my bad, I guess. I know, we can cuddle later. Don't worry, boo. I'll see you later. She's just gonna disappear, isn't she? And she is gone from the map. Okay. The hug was a win, though. You know what's better than a hug from Carlac? Hitting the f subscribe button, you dingus! Also, hit the like button. We return to camp, and Mr. Disney reveals that the writing on Asterion's back is for a ritual to become a true drag queen, and his pimp daddy, Cazador, plans on sacrificing him for his ascension. Asterion obviously doesn't like that, so we agree to kill Cazador free of charge, because any excuse to kill evil people is a win. Before heading to Moonrise Towers, I decided to go to the Wraithman Toll House to defeat Garen Gothorm for a little XP boost before we set the stage for the endgame of Act 2. The first time, I forgot about the Jealous Avarice ability, which deals damage to you based on the amount of gold you're carrying. So after dying horrendously fast, I put away my 9,000 gold and took them on. While this footage of me destroying them in the background is playing, now's a good time to mention that Booming Blade wasn't working correctly at the time of recording this, since it's not supposed to trigger Deep Impact for Pact of the Blade. So in reality, I shouldn't be dealing this much damage. But hey, easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? So any of the fights are leaned slightly toward my favor by approximately 23 damage per round on average, um, in case you were wondering.
Sorry guys. After bankrupting Garingo Thorm, we finally made our way towards Moonrise Towers, and we met the big villain of this act, J.K. Simmons. This is just the hardest character intro ever. It's so... I'm so sorry, my lord. Oh my god. Outside my control. Cry again. <laughs> oh my god. After pissing my pants, Rel notified us that the artifact is deep beneath the Thor mausoleum, where we can find Balthazar, which we've already done, and Kethric is already waiting at the top of Moonrise Towers, so, um, I guess the stage is set. Let's get this rolling. Before I enter the Shadowfell to confront Balthazar in the Night Song, I bring along Shadowheart to conclude her storyline, one way or another. As soon as I am able, I initiate combat with Balthazar after he's done explaining how evil he is. I'm, and you still fail to appreciate the gifts I bestowed on you, Aileen. Sad to see a thing of beauty not recognized. Like I said, so average well. Arby's enjoyer. Can you take a guess how this fight went with a bunch of enemies who don't have Devil Sight? Yeah, that's right. We cast Darkness, and while quite a few enemies surrounded me, they were no match for my big hammer. After clearing these ads, it was just me facing off against Balthazar, who kept going to the exact same position his minions died at. I got bored of Eldritch blasting him from my cloud and smacked him with my big hammer. We began our conversation with the Night Song, who questioned our motives for being here, if we were here to kill her and claim the title of Justicier. After I denied that claim, Shadowheart stepped in and attempted to stop me from freeing the Night Song, and while I do feel remorse for this, I used my big hammer on Shadowheart, because if she isn't safe, nobody is. I don't care who I had to step over to be the hero of the story, because with my power, I am the very writer of my own tale, and I decide the fate of this run. Long story short, we weren't gonna stop now, regardless of the T-posing models of the enemies I killed, and Shadowheart apparently. With Aelin storming into the material plane, we also return with a slightly heavyish heart, agreeing to storm Moonrise with a large group that Jahira put together, and take down J.K. Simmons once and for all. Beginning on the main floor, the first attempt ends in an unwinnable scenario after all my allies died, so I reload and use the only tactic I know is guaranteed to work, Barrelmancy. By casting darkness and walking into it, you're able to get close without triggering combat and set up your explosives. After opening combat with a massive amount of damage, they almost regain the advantage with Hunger of Hadar, but I had plenty of arcane interference arrows to deal with it. As the enemies fell, they stood no chance against us, except for Jahira. While I was able to defeat powerful foes with my big hammer, our druid companion fell to the might of a paladin's divine dead. smite. When we cleared the rest of the floor, Jahira's corpse lay still on the cold stone ground. I found more worms to put in my brain, and we ascended up the tower, easily dealing with any who stood in our way. After exploring the second floor, I found enough worms to max out my illithid potential. With my resources depleted, knowing J.K. Simmons was waiting for us, I took a potion of angelic reprieve to gain a long rest before facing him down. Aelin joins us at the tower's peak, and Thorm realizes that his immortality is gone. We at first tried to intimidate him into surrendering, but failed the second roll. He attempts to make me bow. The artifact saves us, however, and we initiate combat with the Oathbreaker. Oh my god, I'm going first. Okay, so... If I go to Kethric now, he's just gonna divine smite my ass, so I guess we we can do something here that I like to call the ultimate strategy. Because I can. Moonbeam! Oh my god! Is we're gonna cast a third level shatter right here destructive wrath beautiful eldritch blast baby oh yes that's only 30 to hit holy shit. 
Um, Jesus. Okay. Uh, never mind. We don't do that on Catherick, and instead we just farm these necromites. Catherick, I know you have Divine Smite, but have you met my bestest friend, but Booming Blade? Have you met my best friend, Booming Blade? He's a really cool guy. But I think we're gonna take care of your little annoying people here. Please just hit once. Nice. Hammer versus hammer, I win. He runs away, clearly scared of my big hammer, and we chase him down the meat tube. After slaughtering some walking brains, we find that the client Mizora wanted us to rescue is, in fact, Mizora herself. And because she's a b the pact isn't broken yet for Will. God b Pushing ahead, we find a large room with tons of undead inside, and quickly find myself surrounded within darkness. The Death Shepherd kept bringing back its allies, and darkness eventually dropped. I teleported away, lining them up for a lightning bolt. Afterward, I was surrounded again, but turned the fight in my favor with a wall of fire, allowing me to finish them off. After solving this annoying 3D brain puzzle, we find the Waking Mind and a couple pieces of loot. By putting the Waking Mind into the Severed Head slot, you can talk with the Gith Zerai, who will grant you the Gith Zerai Mind Barrier permanent buff, which grants advantage on intelligent saving throws. Not necessarily useful in the upcoming fight, but certainly useful in the long run. Before confronting J.K. Simmons, I clear the rest of the floor and ambush these unsuspecting cultists with my big hammer. Now that we've gained a sufficient amount of XP, it was time to descend to J.K. Simmons and destroy him. After using the rejuvenation station, we had our full resources at our disposal, and we were ready to solo this major boss fight by myself. You said it was under control. The Testament of Merkel! We are the Power Rangers. and most powerful creatures in existence. Okay, so Catherick is gonna sit here. He's at low HP. Um, but what we can do, what we will do, is walk over here, enter turn-based mode, cast a mention door. Hoo-ya! There you are, yeah. as predicted. What is it, I wonder, that draws one toward death <laughs> like a moth to light? Um, it's my need to you fulfill my destiny. Away, absconded with the prism. The one thing that could prevent me from fulfilling my destiny. Enough talk, let's finish this. With pleasure. And we're already next to Aelin. I get to go first. Whoop! will keep getting back up. And that, my friends, is called strategy. Oh, Catherick. You're gonna die horribly. Oh, sh**. He just came over here. Ooh. Okay. Thank God I had armor of Agathus. Okay, he's gonna tentacle whip me. Thank God for my high-ass AC, man. Do something, Aelin. Uh, shield. I cannot let that touch me, because then I can't heal. Everything is going according to plan. Exactly like how I want it to. There we go. Ouch. Do you have extra attack, my guy? Okay, there is one potion that I have that can fix this situation. So we're at one HP, guys. Uh, um... And that's why we carried that thing around. Catherick, meet my best friend. Oh, Catherick, I'm so glad we met. Blood follows me everywhere. What? Oh my god, are you serious? Jesus. That shield bash reaction is crazy. Holy sh You know, this is really cheesy. We're just gonna do it again. Come on, Catherick. Do something. Yes. Made another attack. No, Aelin, why? 
third level magic missile. This guy's a beast. Look at all his stats. All positive stats. 19 charisma, 18 strength. Man is a beast. <coughs> and then let's use Eldritch Blast on this guy and just hope it hits. Aelin just cannot die. Honestly, what I should do is I just I, I could just throw a potion at Aelin, can I? Yes, okay. Now it's time for the hard part. What a fool you are. You cannot kill me. I am eternal. Oh, that's great, dude. Uh huh. Well, oh joy, oh joy. We're boned. So, first thing to know about him. Wait, he's not immune to blinded? What? See, what I was thinking is we burn our pocket beholder on this guy. But let's see if we can take him. Never mind, he can just attack me even darkness. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll teleport away. Merkel's presence. Bone chills all nearby enemies. Let's do it! Destructive Wrath. Thanks for letting me know what that hit. Woo! Holy crap, that missed. I am such a beast. Oh my god, I'm a beast. Wait, what? No way I take this out without a Beholder. This is fine, everything is fine. Just keep attacking him. Just keep attacking him, Zaz. Just keep going, it's fine. Holy crap. Okay, we're gonna action cast Darkness, and then we heal. Actually, I guess we can't really heal. Um, we pray to God is what we do. That's a, that's my game plan. Crying is a free action, guys. Remember that. Script. Oil of accuracy. Just I gotta make sure I hit these. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I believe I can solo this. This is fine. Okay. 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 How many hit points do you have? Sixty-nine hit points. Nice. Okay. We are going to cast Booming Blade on you. Booming Blade, one more time, hook for a crit. Yeah! Yes! Oh my god! We didn't even have to use the Beholder. We're just better. We're just better. We're just better. You did well to defeat Ketherick. <coughs> <laughs> but Catherick was only the first to fall. Yes. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. Well, if there's one thing that this playthrough is about, it's that enough lives have been lost. I don't want to send any others to their deaths. And if they died, would their deaths not count? But they need not die, for they would have you. You have the makings of a leader. Your actions have already inspired those I have to play alone, But if though. we are to succeed, we will need others. Very well. Since you insist, the fate of Baldur's Gate <laughs> and the world entire must hang upon your conviction. I will do this by myself. That is what I'm here to do. I'm here to solely save the world all on my lonesome. The most broken multi-class ever and the biggest pouch of items that you have ever seen. That's all I'm here to do. It's kind of terrifying if you think about it. Like, think about, like, the fate of the world. It's like, everyone in camp's waiting around, like, yo, you need help, dude? I'm just like, nah. I'm good. Like, are you sure? Like, yeah, okay. As, like, I'm stabbing and, like, smashing Catherick Thorm's skull in with a hammer. It's like, okay. Well, I guess she's, I guess she's right. What, what, what you call